Now, all of that for St. Paul, as we know, was not without cost. Indeed, to hear today's gospel proclaimed on his feast day, as tough as that gospel is, where it talks about being hated because of my name, St. Paul knew exactly what that meant. Because, as the gospel says, Paul was, in fact, dragged before governors and kings for the Lord's sake to bear testimony and not to be anxious, but trusting that the Spirit would give him a word in those difficult hours. Well, we all know Paul died with Peter in Rome. He died a victim in the persecution of Nero, but a victor in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. For Paul... Everything he became grew out of his baptism. And I suggest to you that indeed that is true of us. Everything we become as people of faith grows out of the experience of our baptism. For when we speak of call and conversion, and that's language that Anglicans aren't always comfortable with. Conversion. It doesn't sound like us. Well, maybe it should. You see, there's a great tension in the life of the church still today. Was Paul converted on the road to Damascus? Or was he called? And then the rest of his life was a conversion to that call. So for us... It seems to me that we're called through the waters of baptism to a particular way of living. And we spend the rest of our days asking God's grace to convert us day by day into that way of living. That way of thinking, that way of feeling, that way of acting, behaving in the world. We speak... Un, not unlike St. Paul, of renouncing the forces of wickedness in the world and turning to Christ to accept his salvation. We speak, as Paul often did, of putting our trust and our confidence in Christ's grace and love for our lives. And we speak as often as St. Paul did of the need for obedience, obedience to Christ, as Lord of the church and Lord of our lives. We speak of being baptized in the one spirit into Christ, as Paul did. We speak of being called to a variety of ministries through baptism, all inspired by that one spirit, and each one is unique, each one contributing to the building up of the church and its capacity for faithful witness in the world. It seems to me, my friends, that St. Paul would have kept the day of his baptism as sacred. The time and place were important, but the call and the commitment to which he was summoned were even more important. And so for us, there's a particular time and date in which we were baptized. There's a particular place, a church somewhere where we were baptized. And those are important. But the call and the commitment to the ministry rising from our baptism is even more important. Our baptismal vows, as we know, call us to a variety of ministries. Worship, teaching, pastoral care, serving the needs of the community, striving for justice and peace among all people, and caring for this earth, our island home. Those ministries belong to the whole people of God. And you and I know that within any community of faith, 
There are those who just stand tall. They shine, they sparkle in terms of the way in which they are faithfully living out one or more of those vows. You know what I mean, don't you? There are people among us who, who just help us by their very presence to worship, to carry us into the praise of God, to lead us in our prayers to God. They have a way of enabling us all to experience the grace of God in the beauty of the sacraments. There are some among us who are just graced by God to teach, to teach the faith, not only by what they say, but by the way they live. They're just living examples of the faith. There are some among us who are just naturals when it comes to caring for people. The elderly, the young, those who are struggling, those who are aging, those who are ill. These people just stand up. They're just like shepherds in our midst. They embody the kind of love of which Christ speaks in the gospel. And there are those among us who stand up and say, this is grand, it's beautiful, and we must maintain it. But there's more to the church than the edifice. There's a world out there that needs our love, that needs to hear the gospel of good news and hope, that needs to hear a message of justice and peace, that needs to hear a call to steward the earth as God's garden. They're the ones who sometimes rock the boat. They're not always popular. They're sometimes like voices in the wilderness and they're crying out. But we need to hear their cry. So we have all these different kinds of people in any community of faith. And because they're so passionate about fulfilling this vow or that one, they inspire us and they move us to a similar kind of passion. In fact, they call us into working with them. Why am I saying all this? Because I want to issue an invitation to you on this occasion as we mark the beginning of the 175th anniversary celebrations. I'd like you to consider two things. First, in the spirit of the way in which St. Paul would have kept the day of his baptism, think about searching out the date and location of your baptism and keep that feast. Do a bit of research. You know where you were born. You know what parish you probably were attached to. So do a little digging. Contact that parish. See if you can't find a copy of your baptismal certificate. See if they can't find that for you and you request a copy. And then keep that piece of paper. Treasure it. Cherish it. Because it's from that experience of your baptism that you are the person you are today as a person of faith. That's where it all began for you. You may have no recall of the moment. But the grace of God was at work even then in your life through that moment at the font. So there's a challenge. Seek out the date and location of your baptism. Mark it down. Put it in your diary. And give thanks to God when that day comes along every year for the grace of God given you in your baptism. And then why not, in an anniversary year, share that date with one another? Perhaps you could have a collection of those dates so that you all have a sense 
of when it was that you were made members of the body of Christ. The second thing I invite you to do is to consider a kind of inventory of the baptismal vows and what it is that you need from God and from the church to faithfully live out those vows. When you came into church this morning with your bulletin, you received a copy of the baptismal inventory. Take that home with you. Do a bit of thinking with it. Think about what you need to live out each of those vows. What do you need the church to be doing? What do you need Warren to be doing? What do you need in terms of the education that's offered to you in this parish to help you live out this vow or that one faithfully? And on the other side of the page is simply a list of the vows and the days of the week. How am I living out these vows from one week's end to the next? Now, I think that might be a bit of an interesting exercise for you as a parish family. Perhaps you might want to take it on throughout the days of Lent. And then when the renewal of baptismal vows comes along at the great vigil of Easter, it'll be a grand celebration of who you are as the baptized people of God and the things you're committed to as the baptized people of God. If Lent won't work for you this year, you've got a great opportunity when homecoming weekend comes in November. What a great way that would be to celebrate the 175th anniversary, the final days of that anniversary year. There are two questions that St. Paul continually reflected on in his life. And they are accounted for in the story of his baptism and con conversion and baptism. Questions are, who are you, Lord? And what will you have me do, Lord? There's a couple of questions for us to think about this year. Who are you, Lord? What do you want me to do? Think about that from the perspective of yourself. Who is Christ for you at this moment in your journey of faith? What title really captures your imagination? What title for Jesus speaks to you at this point in your life? And the second question, how do those questions apply to us as a community at this time in our history? Who is he for the community of St. Paul's? And what is it that he's calling you to do as you celebrate this anniversary and look forward to many more years of faithful witness to the gospel in this place? May God bless your discipleship in Christ Jesus and your discernment of every good work to which the Lord of the church calls you. May he bless your coming in for worship week by week and may he grace you for every service to which you're called week by week. Amen.